and the duration for um, GOT it is calculated from the time of registration until Senate. So it is not uh, not between submission or viva or whatsoever. So two years for masters, four years for PhD, and the timeline is basically from the time of registration of the student until the um, receival of the Senate letter. Um, another important element when we talk about GOT is to ensure that our students uh, conduct or uh, completed their DRP within the time frame. Okay, so for masters full time, it is um, emphasized for them to complete their DRP within the six months, and for PhD, basically within uh, one year, twelve months. For part time for masters will be one year, and for part time PhD will be when uh, one and a half. Years. Given that if they um, if they could complete within this time frame, at least it could assure that they could have started their research um, very much earlier on. So um, these are basically the faculties and the number of um, DRPs before and after their due date. So if you can see the red one is the one that exceeded their due date. So we attempt to actually conduct most of the all the DRPs within the time frame. So basically this is the time frame. And um, in terms of VIVA, so we have conducted uh, online VIVA during the uh, COVID and um, we have actually conducted this successfully in UITM. And um, these are the, basically the numbers of VIVA that have been conducted since uh, 1st January to 8th January. So I would say that um, January to March is more or less face to face and March to current is mostly uh, through online viva so of uh, viva that we have conducted and these are the pending ones okay so the pending ones are basically um the thesis is still under evaluation okay um the number of students they are doing a correction minor correction so these are the faculties and the current numbers of students doing um minor correction and for uitm minor correction the students are given six months so within the six months, they are supposed to do the correction, get the um, approval by the panel and submit their thesis. And these are for the major corrections and these are the um, different various faculties and the uh, um, period or the number uh, number of students and period they, uh, they are taking to, 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 you know, to complete their major correction. And currently, the number of graduates, okay, so for 2020, for Masters by Research, we have 134 altogether in UITM. And for PhD, currently, we are at 105. So we are still um, a bit far from 2019, and hopefully the number will grow towards the end of the year. at this moment is 13 uh, 30 percent higher than uh, previous year and for masters we uh, we reduce a bit five percent okay so um in terms of information i think um that's all on the information and this is the um, qr code you can st um, scan for attendance but we will provide you the um link um in the chat box later on as well okay so um Coming back to our topic today, okay, so um, I believe everyone here would know that PhD proposal, um, known also as DRP in UITM, basically is a major milestone in a PhD student's journey. So the students basically have to pass the DRP further into their studies. So I think um, for an evaluator, okay, so for an examiner panel for a PhD DRP, I think the roles and responsibility shoulder is rather critical in ensuring that we provide the students with valuable input, okay, so critical feedback that could actually help them. So, and today's session is all about this, okay. So um, let me just stop my sharing. So today, we are honoured to have um, Professor I.R. Dr. Jamaluddin Mahmoud, okay, Professor Jamaluddin. Um, he's from the Faculty of Mechanical Engineering and is a well-decorated postgraduate supervisor. And I believe he will um, really would be able to walk us through on today's topic. And without further ado, I will pass the floor to Prof. Um, Jamaluddin. Okay, thank you, Dr. Sheila. Uh, could you hear me, everyone? Yes, yes, Prof. 
All right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to use uh, my laptop as the presentation slide eh, to show the presentation slides. And then my phone as the uh, microphone, right? I'm going to talk through my phone. So hope uh, the connection was very good, right? Okay. Okay, could you all see my slides there? Not yet, Prof. Not yet. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nope. No, not yet. Not yet. Hold on there. Eh? Mm. All right. It's coming in. All right. Okay. So actually, the, the laptop is uh, powered by the line, eh? line, the uh, internet connection. I, I'm using the cable. Direct. Okay. Uh, my phone is uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, my, my phone punya internet. Uh. So uh, today uh, it's given me the task. Uh, it's given me the task to share with you uh, evaluating proposal for PhD SNT. And I think for this uh, coming 50 minutes, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to share. This is not a, a teaching or learning session. Basically, it's just a sharing of information uh, in, uh, for, for all, right? Okay, so the focus of the sharing session for today is uh, there's going to be intro and then first I'm going to show you the technicality in the form and the rubric, eh? the current one, and then what to probe and then how significant eh, is the verdict that we give to the, eh? and then we're going to have a Q&A session. Now, before that, i like to share this, okay? Uh, you know, from a different point of view, eh, we're going to have different perspectives. And sometimes uh, from both sides, we, we, we see things that which is actually correct, but it's just different from both sides. So the idea is that whatever we're going to discuss today, eh, we are, hopefully everyone will be belapang dada and then agree to disagree. Uh, okay, I know that most of you have graduated your PhD. Eh? Those with PhD already, I think you are qualified to become the assessor and you have your own style eh? to evaluate uh, a proposal, a PhD proposal. Eh? However, this is just, uh, I'm sharing with you uh, the way I see things eh? and how I conduct eh? uh, the, the, the session. Eh? Now, before that, let's intro uh, the role of an assessor uh, thank you to Dr. Sheila just now. So, he, he, uh, not only we are uh, assessing, eh, but the responsibility basically is that we want to keep with the standard. So, there's a PhD, a standard. Uh, it's good eh, to keep the standard. Uh, it's for UITM. We want to make sure that all the uh, PhD graduates eh, uh, is, uh, uh, is uh, following the standard eh, of a PhD. And then we assess, we're going to give marks and verdict and also thanks also to Dr. Sheila also. Other than that, we are actually also guiding the candidates eh, to, to hopefully with, with, with our comments or in our suggestion, the candidate uh, could graduate on time. That is the target. So as a guiding, eh, we are in the, uh, in the session when we are the guiding the candidate, we also help to make the candidates clear about his or her work. And it can be a reflection to him. So he will sit down after that. He will think that is my work, whatever that I'm proposing is be good enough for a PhD. And then we also try to guide them to achieve the standard. And I think one of the things that I, I usually emphasize is on meticulousness. Eh? Try to make the student as meticulous because the time duration, right? the time duration, if you're not meticulous, there will be a lot of jobs we need to do uh, rework. Uh, corrections, and then uh, we do not have much time then. So it's good to be meticulous, eh? doing the right thing at the right uh, at the first time. Okay, the philosophy, what is PhD? Uh, in general, if we talk about PhD, uh, this is the this is the philosophy or this is the, the guide. When I did my PhD, I, I wanted to know what is the requirement of PhD? And I graduated from Cardiff University, and then I could not see any of it. 
So when I search on the net, I took something from this is a, from Cambridge University. Okay, it's about talking about dissertation. It's about talking about significant. It's talking about discovery of new knowledge. Uh, it's talking about development of new theory, significant publications, and the words. Eh, the key requirements, if you look there, is the, like the novel finding. Eh? It's uh, talking about novel finding, a broad and depth, discuss critically, uh, discuss critically, and then uh, what's the meaning of novel? When we talk about novel, novel means like a new kind, eh? different from anything seen. It's a novel idea. If you look at the synonyms, it means that original, inventive, innovative. So. But usually, when we talk about PhD, we, we use the term uh, novelty. Now, I like to share this. This is not originally from my thought. Eh? It's uh, from a professor from a Sheffield. He described the novelty in, in three levels. Eh? The three levels. So the first, the highest level of novelty is talking about uh, the students or the candidate developing new theory, new equation, new mathematical model, things like that. Now, the second level is uh, come up with something like uh, new methods or new algorithm, new tools, new approaches, new product. And the lowest level of novelty is the, the furnishing eh, new data to accept or reject existing theory. Eh? Accept or reject uh, existing theory. However, for a PhD, if you just come up with a uh, furnished new data, especially in the SNT, it's quite difficult eh, to defend this. But however, it's still novel. Eh? It's still novel. Uh, new data means also still novel, right? So these are the three things, the level of novelty that I've been stressing out. Eh? This is, uh, uh, I, I'm taking this eh? because so far this is a, a good description, eh? talking about novelty. Right? Okay, what is the standard, the common standard? I would just like to share with you the common standard of PhD. We're talking about the international standard. If you look at the work that they've been discussed, you know, uh, when I was studying uh, in the UK, it's been discussed. A PhD, uh, in general, they can produce three journal papers. Eh? It's about the, 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 the content could publish three journal papers. And of course, in the, in the UK, the, 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 they, when they talk about journal papers, basically it's like ISI or Q1 or Q2. However, we must understand that at UITM, we have our own standard, eh? our own standard. Uh, the minimum, eh? the minimum is that we have to publish at least two Scopus Journals Index eh? before graduation. Now the form and the rubric, eh? this is just for the technicality. Uh, once we become the assessor, these are the forms that we have. This is the latest one. If you can see up the top right hand side, eh? 2019, this is the latest one. But the Defense of Observed Research Proposal Assessment Form. So you will be given marks. Eh? So there's a rubric there. It's not that clear, but there's a guideline there uh, on how to give the marks there. So if we zoom to one by one aspect, we can see that the first one, yes, we can see uh, the title. Eh? Uh, so far, I, I don't really want to uh, uh, discuss heavily on the title because this is just a, a DRP, okay? DRP. Uh, and then uh, problem statements, there's a 20% marks for the problem statements. Uh, and then you see the problem statement and the B is research gap. So basically the research gap you can see it comes from the literature review. The third one is uh, the marks, you know, the research objectives itself. Okay. So it's 20%, contributing 20%. Uh, number four, also the literature review. Okay. Or the framework is 20%. Uh, number five is about the research methodology or research design. It's contributing 20% and significant application is going to contributing about to 15%. So this is just the form, the technicality. Yeah? So I, I'm just showing you that eh? for those who have not seen this, this is, this is the form. Okay. And then um, what to probe actually, eh? what to probe? Uh, the student will pass the proposal uh beforehand to you before the drp and then during the drp session uh, what do we need to probe all right okay uh this is my style eh? my style i put that jm style this is my style so i will ask one uh, question eh? which is a, a, a usually a common question during the viva session what will be the novelty what's the novelty of the work 
Okay. And then I also going to probe the objective and the respective outcomes or outputs because this will prove the novelty of the work. And then also I will probe on the fundamentals, whether the students, they have solid fundamentals, know all the theories or what need to be done. And then about the understanding of conducting research is a candidate understand what is research. And then I will look also uh, at the literature review, whether it's ex extensive or not. And then the methodology, preliminary results. I also look at the references, publications, and the plan of study. So these are the, the points here. I'm giving the points first. Later on, I will elaborate on that. Okay. So these are the points that uh as an assessor we can look at right we can look at that okay the novelty okay so we can ask the candidate directly what would be the novelty of your research we can ask however if the candidate could not answer or we see answer we can also probe at the research objectives what are the expected outcomes uh, if you remember just now we have the three levels of uh, novelty, whether he's uh, coming with a new mathematical model, a new theory, or whether he's uh, uh, is he developing uh, a new tools, a new materials, a new product from that. And the other thing is that the uh, and the uh, and the uh, uh, and the uh, the other thing is also from the research gap. Eh? The research gap from the research, you can still also uh, show you whether from there, you can prove whether the work would be novel or not. So other than that, you can ask, eh? you can ask the candidate, describe the expected outputs or outcomes. And also from the, the third one, if you look at this, uh, the third one eh, from here, you can probe the verbs, Bloom's taxonomy, okay? If you remember the Bloom's session, there's six uh, level of domains. Okay, the higher high levels is uh, about synthesis. Eh? About synthesis. Synthesis means uh, producing something new. Eh? You are constructing something eh? from not there, making new things. So that is uh, is showing that uh, the candidate is producing something. Eh? Producing something. So from in fact from this uh, research objective, also you can see. And you can ask them from the each research objective, what will be the expected output outcome? For example, the first one, uh, the, 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 the candidate will say uh, the one to produce a new model or to establish a new model. So what you expect is a mathematical model. Okay? It's a mathematical model. It's a new theory. If you say that they're going to fabricate or going to formulate a new uh formulation chemical formulation eh? so from there you can probe what would be what is the outcome so you then you can match if the candidate could not match with the level of novelty then you yourself the assessor that me myself i can uh you know match that with which level of the novelty so mm -hmm. from the objective prof, prof jama um, yes yes um, could you mind um, hiding the stop sharing? Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Okay, and then uh, you can may ask also the 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 uh, candidate to highlight the research gap, right? To highlight the research gap. Uh, the other way to 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 show the research gap is uh, some of the candidates they will produce a table, eh? a table comparing the proposed and past studies. Yeah, they will have a one table there and then from the table they have a previous research one two three and four and then they start you know uh, marking uh, this research is doing that this this research is doing this this one and then from there mine is this okay so that would be a very good evidence also uh, to show that the novelty of the work and also from that actually from the literature review we can look at the references yeah? where the references is substantial uh, recent relevant and fair you know of uh, the the important of recent references is that uh, some of the problems that they've been discussing they say a uh, lack of research but the main references is in 2010 it means like 10 years ago eh? 
it's not but not might not be recent within the time frame maybe the last five years, five years somebody has solved that so that's why it's also good if you probe on the references whether it's recent and sometimes the problem statement is always or the research gap is talking about the their, their groups eh? their group the, the the references are from their groups so you can see the papers come from the the, the same supervisor or the same person so in that sense it's not white coverage not fair you know so if it's possible we we want to see the references it's a uh, it consists of fair white uh, many authors uh, many types of publications and then from there we can gauge whether uh, the problem segment or the research gap uh, is actually uh, truly uh, the gap is current gap eh? the problem is it is it a current problem or not okay and then about the good graphs of the fundamentals uh, we as the assessors actually we are the content experts uh, last time we have the research methodologies okay? uh, we know the research methodology uh, and then due to that you know we can ask the fundamentals uh, just probe one or two which you think imp important for the student ask ask the student to explain yeah? ask the student to explain and it's also okay yeah? acceptable if you ask other relevant fundamentals which not presented in the proposal and maybe you are the expert in, in the subject matter the student is talking just about uh, method a or theory a and uh, it, it happens that you have been developing another theories two three and four then you can ask them and you can ask the candidate out there do you know that this is the theory can you explain so this will, will open up the the, the 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 mind of the students say oh there's a there's a more more to explore and then uh, we can also having uh, asked the student eh, what is research eh? or what is the purpose of conducting research this is just to test uh, maybe the student understand about conducting research or not this is uh, important uh, or critical especially for students who converted from first year eh, degree eh, bachelor degree and then they convert they stay straight away doing phd or maybe uh, the candidate do not have uh, research experience where their masters is conduct uh, they have uh, pursued their masters masters by coursework or something like that you know so if we ask about research and if they understand that will help them a lot eh? they will not and then uh, you see another thing about the literature review uh, we can highlight is can we see eh? if it, because when we talk about uh, brp session the student just now we can see whether they're presenting in the six months or at least 12 months and they have they have conducted quite uh, they, they should have reviewed quite a number of papers eh? and then uh, do they have uh, the way they write it there is there any element of critical review so if not maybe we as the assessor we can we can remind the candidate you know uh, uh the review is not only about uh, the chronology and the, the important thing also that you can critically review you know you can make a critical review okay? and if the student have conducted a very good literature review that gives these new findings okay? and then that work can be published in an impactful journal okay? there, there are a few cases where uh, the candidates publish in the q1 okay? q1 or q2 elsevier journal eh? which is good they have conducted a really uh, good uh, literature review eh? so this is uh, what we're trying to help eh? so if they have conducted a very good literature review then we can recommend them to publish eh? we can recommend them to publish now the methodology is uh, in my case i will probe whether the candidate has a clear understanding about the procedure eh? and also we, we ask them why 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 do you do this and what is in the element of teacher review uh you know uh, they have uh, several methods and then the candidate should discuss the several methods and from there they will select one method which is uh, suitable yeah uh, to their work they will, will select that so the reason why they select their their study also important yeah uh, because sometimes uh, there are cases where students uh, uh develop a very good proposal but they do not really understand eh, why they did the research especially if the work is uh based on frgs grants you know frgs uh, the research grants right? 
So sometimes they do not really know why. So it's good if you ask the student why, 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 why are you doing this? Why do you select these methods? And then for each of the procedure, if you want to help them, we can also ask them eh, the expected outputs. For example, uh, from the first test, uh, from in, for example, in mechanical engineering, you're doing the tensile test. From tensile test, what do you expect? Eh? What will be the expected outputs or outcomes from that procedure, from that test? And more importantly, uh, this is very important, is that we need to trigger the mind of the candidate to make sure, eh? ask them, how to ensure that the generated results or the collected data are valid and correct. This is uh, very important. Uh, because uh, we're afraid that once they have produced the results, it's not being validated. So if the results not being validated, uh, then it's quite difficult to publish in an impactful journal. Uh, it's uh, difficult to uh, publish in an impactful journal. And then is the, the using the right tool, the tools that are being used is right tool to measure the right things. And then we can also trigger them by putting the alternative or comparable methods. Say you are doing these uh, final element methods, for example. Is there any other methods can be used to compare your results? Yeah. Uh, or any other approach, like doing instead of final element stimulation, maybe you want to do experiments. And for this benchmarking, if they do benchmark between two methods, yeah? The, the one that they're doing now and then benchmark into, into some, some uh, established methods, then the work itself, the result from that is also publishable. Eh? It's publishable. It can be published. It's a, it's, it's a very good work that you can publish into an eh? impactful journal. And then may also, uh, we look at that, whether it's a thorough analysis or not. Why? Because if uh, a thorough an analysis, for example, statistical analysis, yeah, if, you, if the candidate propose a new model or a new method or a new tools and then the candidates uh, could do a thorough analysis and statistical measuring the accuracy relative variance etc this at least can be published as, as a short paper in an impactful journal and a short paper is something just like uh, four pages like 2000 words but it can be still published in a q1 uh, elsevier journals so this is also that uh, when we ask this, we probe this, this can uh, open the mind of the candidates eh, so that they, they, they will look at this. Right? And then uh, in my case also, I will probe the progress, eh? probing the progress. So in terms of the program, is a, uh, progress, uh, actually presenting primary results to me are very important. Eh? Very, very uh, important because if the candidates could show the preliminary results, at least it proves that the study is feasible, eh? that the proposed study is feasible. Uh, if there's no pre preliminary results, we're afraid that uh, later on when they start doing the experiments, they will have problems. Eh? For example, uh, the equipment is down, you know, equipment broken down or the equipment is not available. Uh, at UITM, and also that we want to see that whether the work can be completed on time. Yeah, let's say four years, can it be completed? Or the experiments, uh, if you want to complete the PhD in four years, uh, the experiments could, could the experiments or the work could be completed in two years, for example. And from there also, we as assessors, we can recommend or suggest whether the scope of work is uh, too ambitious. Eh? Too many scope of work or vague scope of work. From there, so we could advise, say this is uh, too broad what you want to do. You want to take the data from three different uh, universities, three research centers. Uh, that would be quite difficult. Uh, some of the tests uh, might, okay, if they, they said that the, the test will be conducted in other countries, wow, to me, we better advise them not to do so especially when it comes to like this uh, COVID pandemic, then we can see that we cannot go anywhere. So these are the things that if we look at, okay, then uh, we, we can advise them. Eh? We, we can suggest uh, make a suggestion to them. Uh, in fact, from the preliminary results, uh, the candidates may present at a conference or publish in a conference proceedings. 
So that will be good for him. Eh? It's, it's, it's a, a, a practice. So it's good that if the candidate uh, during the DRP session, the candidate has at least uh, presented a paper at the conferences or at least publish a, a paper in the conference proceedings. It will be very good, at least. It shows that uh, the work has uh, kick-started. Eh? Kick-started, that's one. And also, we look at the publication, the evidence, whether the student has uh, published any papers, uh, attended any conference presentation, uh, sent uh, internet IP you know, uh, application, for example, copyright, and then has the candidate uh, participated uh, IID, at IID competition, eh? the design competition and uh, won awards or not. So these are the evidence that say that the progress is very good. If, if during the DRP, the students can presenting, I think that the work uh, is ongoing, it's good. But if during the DRP, uh, there's nothing to show, no preliminary results, that's, that's quite critical, eh? that's quite critical. And then we can also uh, probe the plan of study. Eh? We can probe the plan of study because the student, they, they, they're going to have their plans, their milestone, their gun chart, and then we look how much time spent. For example, during the DRP, which semester uh, is the candidate in? Eh? Which semester? Are they in uh, semester one, semester two, three or four? Uh, if the candidate is only in semester four, that means uh, he left with about four semesters eh? for, to, to, to graduate in four years. Now, uh, another important thing also that we, 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 we must bear in mind is that the scholarship that given by the government so far is only up to three years. Okay. Since a few years back, there's no extension. That means that after three years, whether you complete your PhD or not, you have to come back. Yeah, you have to come back to work. So this is another challenge. So uh, we try to help the candidates uh, to complete everything, the experiment, at least three years. Okay. Three years. If they can finish early, it's even better. And if the candidate has a clear plan and timeline to, to achieve the research objectives, you have a clear time. The gun chart, eh? we can probe at the gun chart, what you're going to do next, we can ask them. And is there any contingency plan? For example, when it comes here like this, uh, we did not foresee this, eh? uh, the COVID-19 is coming. Suddenly, for a few months, yeah, all work halted. Eh? And then, what is the contingency plan? Right. So if, if they have a contingency plan, we just, this, this kind of question will trigger the candidates. They say, oh, okay, I have to, yeah, to plan well in order uh, for me to graduate on time and uh, complete a good research, yeah? complete a good research. Now, uh, other issues, uh, I think uh, for quick check, we can check for the proposal alignment now, uh, there are cases uh, before this, I'm not sure now, there are four cases, there's a, when we, when we, when I be became a panel eh, at the uh, DRP session, there's, there's two, two kinds of proposal. The first one is like a brief one, it's like a 12 pages, 15 pages, and the references is uh, less than 20, about 12, 7, but uh, there there are also candidates who present a good proposal, you know, like there's a already a almost completed, 99% completed chapter 1, chapter 2, and chapter 3. Eh? Chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3. And for, my, for myself as a supervisor, I will urge my students to prepare a very good proposal. Means like chapter 1, 2, 3, 4 is the uh, preliminary results, and 5 is the conclusion of the whatever has been done. Eh? So that uh, uh, but if the candidate, you know, uh, came with the uh, 15 pages and then 12 list references, eh, list of references, it's so only 12, it's, it's quite difficult, eh? quite difficult for us to, to help the student. Uh, yeah, uh, okay. So if they, they presented a uh, good, proposal, eh? like 50 pages with chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, which is all, almost already, uh, almost completed, then we can check for alignment. Eh? We check for alignment, whether the objective and the methodology is uh, aligned, uh, the problem statement, the research gap are aligned, eh? whether 
the the it's like a thesis yeah like we are evaluating a thesis whether it's aligned or not and then we can also probe just the title for the subsections especially chapter two because i strongly believe that whenever a drp uh a proposal eh, during the drp the proposal chapter two i think it's about 80 or 90 percent completed so we can look there the subsection title and then we can scan just now references toc page number and then for the spelling scan citation number versus references sometimes it's not there especially if, uh, those who are not using like mendeley or something like that no uh, the tools okay there's a possibility that the number of a citation and number of references uh, do not match and then we can also check the structure of the sentences now the issues eh? uh, these are the common issues uh, during the uh, DRP, uh, there are cases which references too few. In this case, I'm not putting any numbers. Eh? Uh, I'm also not putting any uh, recommending any number like objective that you should have three objective or four research objective. Uh, it's, it's up to the assessors. Eh? It's up to the assessors. But however, I think when you look at it, if you look at it, it's the references are too few. That means you can see oh, it's too few. For example, for 12, eh, you have like 15 references or 12 references during the RP, I think. And uh, the candidates already spent like three semesters. So I think that could be considered too few. Eh? Uh, and then again, as I mentioned just now, the research project too simple. It's like nine pages, 15, 12 pages. Uh, in some cases, research objective not clear, uh, and then they just put like to to determine, to determine one, to determine second one, to determine the third one, to determine. Eh? We should look for uh, for PhD especially. We should look for the higher level cognitive level, eh? uh, so that to I know to formulate something, eh? to formulate or to design, to synthesize uh, something like that. Eh? Uh, and then in some cases the methodology not clear the methodology not clear uh, they just put a few lines i think during the drp it's very important that the student uh, the candidate has a, a clear methodology eh? uh, in order for us so that we know that uh, they if they follow the methodology then they can graduate on time eh? producing a, 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 a high quality research and there are also candidates who do not know about novelty or in the proposal is not highlighted the novelty of the work could not explain the expected outcomes uh in some cases this is quite uh important eh? or critical where the student or the candidate could not explain the fundamentals eh? uh, they're using they're using for example if uh, the student uh, they want to use uh, uh, artificial neural network and then they could not explain about artificial neural network they do not know how artificial neural network works and then i think that is quite critical and then lack of understanding about research they don't really understand about research because uh, why some of them uh, becomes like uh, ra research assistant just uh, following whatever the supervisor's instruction eh, based on the research grant uh, and then uh, this is something critical so we have to look at the wrong data collection or wrong data analysis tools eh? especially for the uh, statistical tools uh, in statistics uh, there's always uh, a minimum number of samples eh? there's always a minimum number of samples for example uh, if the other thing is in, in experiments eh? for example uh, if this you can see uh, analogy eh? this is analogy the students wants to measure the temperature but he's he, in, in his model he's using a ruler eh? a ruler to measure temperature so that would be not logic unless the phd work is uh, developing a new ruler which can measure temperature uh, that will be something novel eh? So this is some things that we can help the students because sometimes they do not understand, especially when they're doing the statistical, uh, talking about the variance, uh, take, uh, talking about the uh, accuracy, median, uh, all, all of that term has the, the meaning, eh? the meaning, the, the physical meaning. 
and then uh, the other issues is about writing skills and language of course uh, this also you know sometimes the students they are very good but when we look at the proposal uh, the way they write it or the language eh, there's a lot of a uh, grammatical error or spelling error that is something that we can look uh, into all right so based on the information eh, based on information obtained from the drp session okay uh, we have probe i think so far i do not just uh, I, i did not mention about the uh, title but other than that i mentioned about the novelty about the objective the outcomes methodology research gap okay the preliminary results so from based on the information obtained from the drp session once we ask the student so we have the document in front of us which is the research proposal and we have the student presented and then we ask question and from the students feedback or the, uh, or response uh, we can see eh? we can evaluate that whether the proposal uh, is sound proposal eh? i see can produce a sound proposal where written an extensive literature review eh? right at least we must uh, okay good uh, literature review then the proposal itself now how about the candidate okay from the uh when we ask the students then the candidate then we we say whether the candidate is clear crystal clear about his or her research or not because uh, if the candidate is not clear about the research then uh, he, uh, the the research could not be conducted smoothly right and about the fundamentals so is he already attained the the, the basic fundamentals for the candidates to go on with the research okay and then and then in terms of the clear so we can see that whether is the candidate clear what to do next uh it's also important not just to do uh know what to do whether it can be done within the study period is he targeting uh, apc or got yeah? if you can submit your thesis uh, less than 3 years can get apc anugerah penyelidik cemerlang or in less than 4 years got right and the candidate is a candidate able eh? at least show some sign that uh, the candidate could argue and defend academically eh? if uh, if you ask question and he keep saying that i think i think i think eh? if the candidate keep saying i think i think i think that is not academically lah because when he mentions something it must based on facts or references or figures that's how the candidate should argue or defend eh, his thesis and the idea also is that whatever that he intend to do he intend uh, the candidate uh, intend to do it must be the hypo hypothesis could be proven scientifically and or mathematically so if we can instill this into the candidate's uh, mind it will be very good because uh, during the viva we do not we do not want during the viva this question uh, being imposed eh, during the viva okay there there there, there are cases eh? uh, based on my experience there are cases uh, in a viva session where the students uh, mention something you know mention something just by his mouth it's not proven scientifically or mathematically scientifically means you have to do experiments from the results of the experiments from the validated data uh from the reliable data then only you can come up with the findings or conclusion something like that or for those who are doing mathematically or doing uh, writing a program you know at least there's some basis for the candidate to to defend eh, the the work now how about the proposed work i think uh, from the information we, we we can see that whether the work is novel or not and then uh we as the assessor uh are we convinced eh, that the candidate could publish good journal papers good journal papers within the period uh, specified study period at least two uh, scopus index journal but it would be good that if the work can produce at least wos well, with impact factor or q1 or q2 papers that would be good for the student and for the supervisors and for the universities eh? that will be great uh, that will be great and in fact if already q1 publish i uh, i mean the students uh, okay won't have much problem during the viva if there is none 
no publication during the RP, maybe we can ask the candidate the target publications. Just like in uh, when we apply FRGS grants, huh? we put there the target publications. What are the details? Which part and you're going to publish and to which journal? Is the journal Scopus Index or something or conference proceeding? This will help to trigger the mind eh, of the candidate. Say, oh, okay. So uh, the candidate will be aware that they have to publish at least two Scopus Index journal. Okay, uh, to improve the proposed study, we as the assessors, right, whatever that we give the constructive comments and suggestions, uh, it will be very useful to the uh, candidates as uh, the aspiration of Ipsis just now. Eh? Uh, Dr. Sheila said that uh, with this, we can improve or we can see, we can ensure that the research work uh, done or completed by our PhD graduates uh, is, uh, is uh, impactful. So, and, and also we, we have to bear in mind that uh, or make clear to the candidate that uh, later on in the VIVA, the thesis examiners, eh, we, we're going to have thesis examiners from other universities and also from foreign countries. That means the supervisor has to select uh, one examiner from other countries. So uh, this all, we, 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 so this, from this we analyze all this information and then later on we will give our conclusion means our verdict our conclusion okay uh what to to award the, the student eh? okay we will look at it the the yeah. okay so to recap the aspect uh, of assessment eh? in a drp the first one is a title research five percent okay five percent research and then the problem statement, 20%. And then the objective, 20%. The literature review or the framework is 20%. Research methodology, 20%. And the significance or the applied value of the research or commercialization is a product, could be commercialization, could be pattern or something like that. Eh? That is 15%. Now, this is the form. Eh? This is a form that we have to sign. Why, why during my, my presentation, I use the word assessor because in the form there, in the form, okay, the final list there, they put the, the name of assessor, name of assessor. So this is the rank, one, two, three, and four. So number four, proposal rejected. Number three is major amendments. Number two, minor correction. And then the first one is the proposal and the DRP work accepted without any I mean students can proceed uh, so that is the marks there so usually uh, in my case I would not put the marks first I will evaluate all do the analysis synthesis and then only I will decide the marks whether the ranking falls uh, on one two minor correction or major correction or reject now, this is from, from one uh, assessor. We're going to have at least two assessors and one chairperson. So once the student have done, okay, have done the presentation, then uh, uh, the, the panels and the chairperson will deliberate on this matter. And then they will, uh, on, on consensus, they will decide whether to give one, two, three, or four. Okay, this is the, the ambience. Okay, so I'm just showing that one, two, three, or four, this defense session there, one, three, and four. And then how significant is the verdict? Okay. We are the assessor, how significant is the verdict? Now, how significant do you think? Uh, it's uh, for myself, so it's, it's always quite difficult okay, to give the rank one, two, three, and four, especially four, okay? But within two and three, you know, it's, 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 it's quite difficult. Uh, whether you want to give no correction, minor or major or reject, okay? Because why uh, the feelings, eh? the, the feelings and the, the motivation and the future of the student, eh? this is quite serious actually. Uh, in a few cases when students, uh, the candidate got a major correction, uh, they will vanish, eh? they quit. They quit. 
there are cases also but uh, some candidates they are very positive even though it's major then they improve they improve so eh, this is so you you I, i strongly believe that you all have your wisdom and that particular session you know during you know particular session of uh, the drp session you yourself uh, have the wisdom to uh, give whether to rank eh, the the proposal and the the drp lah the candidate whether to give one two three and four and later on uh, you're going to deliberate eh? you're going to discuss with the chairman and with the other with other panels uh, which would give Uh, which will be the most appropriate ranking eh? uh, to, to give to the candidate that now uh, uh, this is the presentation so I just now just uh, recap okay we start with intro just now talking about the PhD uh, the philosophy of PhD requirement and also uh, the uh, level of novelty and then i think i have shown you the form and rubric since this is a one one hour session so i try to make it as simple as possible uh, on what to probe that is actually the uh, the main thing that i want to discuss just now what to probe eh? what to probe uh, you have your style i have shared my style uh, maybe later on uh, we can if you have time or you want to discuss maybe uh, you have a better style then you can also uh, share with us or share with me your style eh, what to probe and how to probe and then i also says on the significance uh, of the verdict eh, of the verdict uh, when we when we uh, rank the student 1 2 3 and 4 so uh, before q and a i just want to yeah, there's uh, not much time left so i just Uh, show you all the slides first and then we go to q and a nah. okay uh okay okay just uh before i end this is there is there any question or any uh argument uh, yes prof there is one from the chat okay. box uh, i'll just yeah. read it out okay this is from dr chang So um, the question is, how to determine if the scopes of a PhD research are sufficient, and how is it different from those of a master's research? All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. So my my reference would be on these slides. Eh? These slides. This one, the bottom one. Eh? So as I mentioned earlier, the the common standard, which is we discuss in the U U UK, my research group in the UK, is a three the work eh the work is equivalent three journal papers. It means three journal papers at least three journal paper can be published from that, from 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 the thesis. But at UITM we, we the requirement is at least two, and for masters at least Uh, one Scopus Index publication, so that is the standard. Okay, uh, for PhD, even though there's a uh, three journal paper, it doesn't mean that all those papers published before Viva. No, usually if you can, uh, the candidate can publish one Q1 papers before Viva, that is good enough. Even uh, at UTM, I've been uh, examining one thesis. Uh, during the Viva, the candidate has published uh, three Q1 papers, the amounting impact factor of 12, eh? four point something, four point something, three point something. So the total is 12. I think that is, if we can do that, that is magnificent. Eh? But in standard, as long as I think the work eh, can uh, can be published in three journals, I think that that is that is the standard. Okay. Any any other question or are you happy with the, <laughs> any dispute? Uh, any dispute i'm open for discussion eh? i'm open for dispute also assalamualaikum prof waalaikumsalam i think uh, i'm so sorry if the question i think um, maybe like this how ha. to determine the scope which mean please correct if uh, i'm wrong eh? yeah, yeah. we put the first objective 
to develop finite element model and yep. then what sort of scope to achieve the, the first uh, the first the first one that is the question i think what in is order, the scope yeah mm. in order to achieve the first or second or third we must mm -hmm. define a very good or sufficient uh, scope of work i think that is the question if i'm not mistaken maybe you can have a few things okay here. yeah 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 uh if is this okay um in general okay in general uh usually usually eh, uh this is from my my belief lah, eh? this is from my experience uh in phd level uh if you look at the slides and eh, it's talking about the novelty uh if the student can produce a new equation or new mathematical model now this is quite hard and the second one is usually the student will come up with a new tools new method all right now for in terms of approach uh, it's common to see that for the phd level usually if they come they're producing a new tools they will also have another approach like mathematical for comparison for mathematical uh, I, I know what you are trying to ask mean like uh, whether just to develop model using fea is enough for phd right now my uh, in general if that what is the novelty there what is the novelty now if the candidate for example for master's level eh, let's say using fea now the the uh, the software itself is just application and then you generate results and then you produce the results from there uh there is not uh the element of synthesis eh? the element of synthesis is is not there so that's why it, uh, i'm saying this is is more easy it's, it's more easy if we base on publication for example number one okay you say your objective is to develop something now to develop something if that objective want to do something you can produce the results and then you can publish a high impact journals it's already shown eh, proven that the novelty of the work because it's very it's, it's tough to publish a paper in a q1 paper for example uh, so from there it's actually you can see that that is uh, the scope of work is there but if I, I'm also doing finite elements, if my master student just doing a lot of finite elements, uh, and then from the they they using the model, uh, everything from the finite element, uh, basically it's like application, and then they generate results, they generate the graph. It's quite difficult to publish in a Q1 journal. It's very diff quite difficult to publish in an impactful journal. So, but as long as that work can be published in a Scopus Index journal then uh, based on uh, requirement the student uh, could graduate huh? so that, that is the standard there uh, uh, like you we need to uh, we, the 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 scope work mean for phd you do not have to come up with a lot of uh, novelty just one novelty but that novelty is something that could be publishable in a impactful journal q1 or q2 journal uh, that is then and if you look at the uh, q1 or q2 journals basically you can you can gauge eh, the scope of work the scope of work uh, that is how i i explain to my my students or my juniors uh, say uh, how to publish in a q1 journal is is quite easy eh? it's not quite easy but you know the scope take one uh, a, a paper q1 paper and then from that you look at the scope of work uh so that scope of work will determine whether the work is novel and uh, achieved to a phd standard or not that's that's my uh, uh, uh from my point of view however i think uh from the expert themselves eh, from the expert themselves because we we are white here we are from uh different fields from as expert in uh, in the in uh, your own area 
this might be a, a big scope of work and it can be published in a Q1 uh, journal in your area. Uh, that is for example. What I can give if I am talking about uh, like for materials, I think, you know, for materials, uh, you have to come out in order for you to publish in a Q1 journal, uh, you have to publish, a, uh, you have to produce a new material and then you have to uh, do a few types of experiments. And from there, only you can send and publish that. So I, I'm not sure whether I'm asking, the, uh, I'm answering the question or not, but it's okay, yeah. Uh. Okay, thank you, Prof. Um, any other questions? Okay. Um, Dr. Chang has um, responded uh, from the earlier question. So with reference to the answer that uh, Prof provided earlier, how many scopes are required to publish in one journal? Okay. Uh, that's why you have to, uh, in your area, you can, uh, in your area, you can select one journal paper which is related to that research. You can select one journal paper which is related to your work and from there you can gauge the scope of work. From there you can gauge the scope of work. For example, eh, for example, uh, okay, I publish uh, a, a uh, uh, preliminary results eh? initial about the testing of my tools I develop a tools from using motion capture and then from that I'm using statistic eh? statistic to uh, analyze to ensure that to make sure that, that so what are the scope that include included for example I have to measure the accuracy I have to measure the repeatability and then I have measure to the re reproducibility about my tools and then I prepare that and I submit. Okay, where did I get the idea from that scope? The scope is I'm following a similar paper related to the research. Eh? Similar paper being published in that journal, Journal of Biomechanics. I take that paper, I replicate that work but using my tools and the scope, I followed everything and then I send there and they accept. For, okay, that is one way that we can look whether the scope is not uh, is is enough or not. Hmm. I know it's a uh, it's it's quite uh, I know it's quite uh, uh, broad. You know the the scope because it's different from one person to one person. So that's why in my case, instead of arguing how how big is the scope, I try to quantify it by the number of papers. Uh, so if the candidate already published one Q1 paper, I mean, in general, the PhD work, I think, is, 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 is already okay. Because the novelty uh, has been proven, yeah? it's uh, been peer-reviewed. Now, the only problem, if there is no uh, good publication related to that uh, PhD work. Uh, okay, any other thing? Ah, Dr. Wanat, Wanat, Dr. Dr. Wanat Jimmy, help me with that. Basic rule, one objective equals one general publication. Uh, that also can be done, but yeah, uh, it depends on the type of, if you have that three objective and then three Q1, okay, if you can achieve that, that will be good. Right? Uh, but in, in some universities, they do not limit the number of objectives. Uh, in my case, my PhD, uh, there's seven objectives. And a senior of mine at MMU said that uh, for them, they have one, they have to come up with one research objective in their thesis. One. Eh? So they have one. So that's why I do not want to argue about the number of objectives. But that's just a good one. Eh? That's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a basic rule there. One objective equals one general publication. Right. Any other thing? Anyone wants to add?
if there's nothing more, I think uh, I just show end up my slides. So all right, uh, this is about myself. So if you want to uh, discuss with me further, you can go. This is my email address. That's my phone number. So with that, thank you. Eh? With that, thank you. And I also share back there, there's appendix, eh? appendix if you want to run through the proposal. Eh? But this is more like uh, uh, evaluating a thesis, not just a proposal. All right. With that, uh, I pass the uh, screen to the chairperson, okay, Dr. Sheila. to deliver because um